The stock market is pretty volatile right now, and that's leaving many dividend stocks trading at very attractive prices. And one such stock is the medical device giant Medtronic, who is not only trading at one of the lowest prices in the past decade, but their dividend yield as a result has also risen to one of the highest levels that we've ever seen in its history. And needless to say, guys, I am definitely buying this stock on the dip while I still can. And here's why. Historically speaking, Medtronic has pretty much always been a reliably strong performing stock, even soaring through the 2010s up until these past couple years where the pandemic really caused a reduction in elective surgeries, many different supply chain issues, product disruptions and delays, and of course rising inflation and interest rates, all headwinds that have caused their growth to slow down and the stock to suddenly crash by nearly half its total value, basically wiping away all the gains that they've made over the past decade. But is this massive crash really justified? In my opinion, no. Heck no, and it's not even close. Medtronic has really only grown larger during this time, more than doubling their sales, expanding to over 150 different countries, and leading the global medical device market with even more market share than other giants like Johnson & Johnson, About Laboratories, GE Healthcare, and more. And while the pandemic was a particular challenge, I actually think that they handled it just about as good as anyone could expect of them. See, Medtronic operates in four different specific segments of the medical device and services markets, those being cardiovascular, neuroscience, medical surgical, and diabetes. And yet despite all the recent hurdles, every single one of those segments saw positive organic revenue growth last quarter of mid-single digits, indicating that a recovery is well on its way. In fact, each one of those actually grew at a higher rate than even the broader medical devices market, which is only growing at around 5% a year. So for the biggest player to actually grow larger than the overall market, that's a very good sign. But Medtronic hasn't just focused on this slow but steady growing market. Instead, they're investing in the highest growth parts of it in order to accelerate their own business. For example, the cardiovascular segment is being fueled by double-digit organic growth in their rising structural heart business, which is revolutionizing heart treatments, while diabetes is seeing a similar impact from their new mini-med system growing in the high teens as well. Which, by the way, Minimed is the only system in the world with meal detection technology that automatically adjusts and corrects sugar levels every five minutes. So it, too, is game-changing in its own right. And yet, those aren't even the areas that I'm most excited for myself, as I see even more future potential with their work in artificial intelligence and also medical surgical, namely with robotics. Now, the latter is being propelled by the successful expansion of their Hugo Robotics Surgery platform into more markets around the world, which is very likely to be the future of surgery. And by the way, speaking of expanding into more markets around the world, Medtronic has also done a great job of uh, expanding into emerging markets where they continue to gain double-digit revenue growth in each emerging region other than Eastern Europe, which is obviously being ravaged by the Russia-Ukraine war that is completely out of their control. But if you want to know what the highest growth area of healthcare is, well, that would be artificial intelligence, which is projected to grow by a massive 37% a year through 2030. And Medtronic is doing everything necessary to ensure that they're one of the future leaders of it by integrating AI into their medical devices and services in order to provide much more specialized and personal healthcare while also improving overall efficiency. For example, Medtronic is the only company with FDA clearance for a spine surgery predictive model used in their next-gen unit spine analyzer. They've also built the first to market AI-powered polyp detection system for faster cancer treatment, which has already seen uh, so much success that Fortune placed it on their change the world list of revolutionary products. And Medtronic has even partnered with NVIDIA recently to expand their work in AI even further. 
also opening their new AI access platform that allows developers to test various AI models in a medical environment with the help of both Medtronic and NVIDIA, who can later approve the AI applications and algorithms to be added to their marketplace and even be used in Medtronic's own devices. All of these are big deals that I feel investors are just not really paying enough attention to, might be too complicated for them to understand or maybe they don't just don't look into it. But I, like I said, I think they're big deals. And by partnering with an AI leader like NVIDIA, while also investing in research and development at at least the same rate as their revenue growth, well, I think that Medtronic is building themselves to be a breakout player in the AI space that uh, no one really seems to be expecting. Again, there are several headwinds at the moment that are limiting their growth, but even this year, during some of the worst of times, analysts are still expecting revenue growth of 3%, with a bump up to about 5% next year as well. And by the way, that's actually less than what Medtronic is projecting themselves, so I actually think that they'll easily beat those figures. EPS, by the way, is also projected to grow more over the next five years than the previous five, which I also think that they'll surprise to the upside on it too, especially once the macro economy recovers and inflation goes down. I really think some of these estimates are really lowball figures. But all the meanwhile, shareholders also get to collect an absolutely awesome dividend while they wait for all of these investments and transitions to take shape, as it is now yielding one of the highest rates in their history at close to 4%, which by the way, that history consists of over four decades of consecutive growth, and it's quickly approaching dividend king status as well. So with the stock down by so much, leaving the dividend yield so high and the valuation so low at over a 20% cheaper PE ratio than the sector, despite them being a world leader of their respective market, I just think that the stock is a screaming buy right now for the long term. And you don't even have to take my word for it as 27 analysts on Yahoo Finance together hold a much higher price target for even the absolute lowest estimates. As always though guys, you're gonna have to do your own research and make your own decisions. All of this is just my opinion. I can sometimes get things wrong, I have in the past, I'm sure I will again in the future. But for me personally, when I look at this stock, it just looks like one of the most solid pickups that I can make right now in the market. So the more that it falls, the more I'm gonna be buying for my portfolio. But let me know if you agree with me, let me know down in the comment section how you feel about this stock or any other stocks that you might be picking up in the market. Love to hear your thoughts. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next video, my friends. Hope you're all doing well. Take care, Bye bye